forgotten. <laughs> Nick fans, go home. A big what's up to everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be my Philadelphia 76ers versus New York Knicks playoff preview. I'm so sorry that this is late. This joint was been supposed to be edited, but a lot of stuff has been happening in the last 24 hours where I did not meet my time schedule. But it's all good because we are still here. And with the, the actual two or three of you watching the video, you are appreciated. With that being said, there is a lot to talk about in regards to the series, my predictions, things I'm going to look for. And we will talk about about all of that and more first off the Sixers have finally made it to the first round of the playoffs their first playing game to enter was against the Miami Heat where it was a very grinded out zone worthy game the Sixers eventually ended up on top which is a good join due to the likes of Nicholas Batum Joel Embiid I would say Tobias Harris but it's not him they now move on to the first round to face the New York Knickerbockers so the first thing I think we should talk about is the season series that the Sixers played with the Knicks during the 2023-2024 season, just to give context on what this playoff matchup is going to be. So looking at the season series, the teams have played together four times, and New York has won those games three to one. It must be noted that Joel Embiid did not play most of those games, even though he did, even though he did play the first game, and the Knicks definitely did blow us out. <laughs> In fact, the Knicks blew us out in all of their wins. The only one that we had was game three. And it just so happened that I was in, in New York during that weekend. And even that game was, was pretty close. So take for that what you will. I think it may be harder for New York to game plan for Embiid because of that. But if there's any inclination that they're going to do, do the same thing that Miami did, then the Sixers may have a rude awakening for them. So there were very few storylines that I saw going into this, John. I definitely looked everywhere to see if there was any you know fractions or cracks that we can you know fill up pause <laughs> no diddy it'll be interesting to look at the continuation of the kelly Oubre dante dante divincenzo dante divincenzo squirmish after game three there was a little fight because i think kelly Oubre grabbed some somebody's leg or vice, vice versa i'm not sure that's the only real bad blood that we're going to see there's a villanova component of course of course, the Knicks have their own squadron comprised of Joshua Hart, Jalen Brunson, as well as Dante DiVincenzo, who also went to who all went to Villanova. But there's a guy on the Sixers wearing the Sixers colors who did the exact same thing. That would be one Kyle Lowry. Now, of course, he is an old fossil at this point, but make it be noted. I think he's going to guard Brunson. Obviously, he may not or he he probably won't slow, slow him down. But I think just having that Villanova connection is going to be good. I can already see Kyle Lowry talking all that smack in Jalen Brunson's ear. Plus, I think that's probably going to be the best way to guard him. But we can talk about that later in our notes. I think it's very interesting and important to say that these two teams used to be the trash, garbage, water juice of the NBA. Um, and since that time, both organizations have grown to where they're finally playing their first playoff matchup in about 30 five years the last time this occurred was in 1989 if i got my notes right the last time the sixers and the knicks faced off in a playoff series the knicks would eventually win and sweep the sixers three to zero but have no fear sixers fans the sixers still own the playoff series as they have won 22 matches out of a total 33 so hey luck may be on our side it is always good to have Northeast teams playing well for the, the NBA. That would be the Sixers, the Knicks, also the Celtics. It's just always good to have those blue blood old school programs giving energy back into the association. And I think this is going to be a very good one. Very, very good one indeed. So who are the New York Knickerbockers, otherwise known as the New York Knicks? They are the second team in the East this season. They ended with a 50 and 32 record. Once again, led by Jalen Brunson, a hard nose, no nonsense, contact drive to the rim type guard who can also do step backs too. He's a very dynamic player in that instance. And he tries on the defensive end. 
which is a good join, which is a good join. The Knicks team is just fun. Like I, I definitely did see myself or find myself rooting for the, the actual Knicks, watching random games on Friday nights. So they are a three and D team that majorly plays inside and out from a modern basketball perspective. Of course, they still, you know, shoot threes galore, but most of their offense is done in the paint through their point guard, Jalen Brunson. So they are a typical Tom Thibodeau team, team in that sense, playing under Tibbs has allowed Jalen to break into this next mode or this next tier of NBA player. He has been mentioned for all NBA teams, and I think he definitely has a good chance to crack at it. He was always a good player. Clearly, that's why he left Dallas to come to New York to get his own team. But once Julius Randle injured his, I believe it was his, sho sho his shoulder this season, about two months ago, Jalen just took the whole next step and became Bull, certified stamp. So shout out to, to him. It's unfortunate that um, you're probably going to exit the playoffs because of a hobble Joel Embiid, but it's all good. That's life. Still staying on the topics of the Knicks. They are top 10 in these statistical categories. I'm a nerd, so we always are going to talk about math. They are 10th in three pointers made. They are fifth in boards, specifically first in offensive rebounding. They are fifth in plus or minus. They are seventh in offensive rating. They are ninth in defensive rating, and they are fifth overall in net rating, meaning that st statistically, they're the fifth best team in the NBA. Juxtaposed to the Philadelphia 76ers, the good guys, who are 14th in offensive rating, ninth in defensive rating, 11th in defensive rating, excuse me, and ninth overall in net rating. Now, these numbers are kind of skewed, at least for the Sixers' perspective, because Joel Embiid had not played for two, three months. And the fact that, once again, we're, we're still ninth, like a top 10 technical team in the league speaks volumes, but take for that what you will. The Knicks have better statistical categories or check the boxes off more than than the Sixers do. It would be asinine not to bring up the coaching matchup. You have one Tom Thibodeau on the Knicks and Nick Nurse on the Sixers. Two well-known coaching names. I would say they're probably like both top 10 if not top 15. If there is one thing that both have in common, they will run their star players to the ground. Specifically Tibbs, because we we know that that man loves fresh knees, but Nick Nurse does it as well. You can expect the players to be tired as hell come game time. And I, I, I definitely do think this is going to be a your man versus my man. We are going for it. Whoever scores the most points is going to win type joint. It definitely will be physical as well. Uh, we'll get more into that as we continue. I would give the edge to Nick Nurse just because I think he has a better in-game adjustment scheme than Tibbs. Also, he definitely has a championship. So what is the matchup going to be like? These are two very similar teams, grit and grind, guard, wing, base teams. The only difference is one has a consistent two-way sensor that is seven foot and also from Cameroon, Africa. That would be Joel Embiid and the 76ers. Now, of course he is hurt, but I still believe that a 70, 76% 80% Joel Embiid can still do damage against a Knicks defense. So the matchup is going to have three main components that I think will distinctify. That's probably not, that's not even a word, but will make this series what it is. One, it is going to be physical. The first team to 50-50 balls, to offensive rebounding,s to just getting hustles, shot blocks is going to win this joint hands down. Two, it is going to be loud. We already know how MSG and the Wells Fargo Center be on nights like these. So I'm going to love experiencing the noise of the crowd coming at me from my TV set. Once again, I think when the Knicks and Sixers play well is good for the league. So this is, this is going to be cinema. This is, this is definitely going to be cinema. Sit back and enjoy. I kind of think this is this is going to be a low scoring game just because both teams rely heavily on their defense. The Knicks have a better overall offense, I would say. Schematically, the Sixers usually just depend on Joel Embiid to get his points and everyone feeds off of him. Keys to the Sixers' victory, and I kind of said this already, but first and foremost, the Sixers are going to have to match the energy that New York brings. If they don't, then we might as well just pack it up. This is going to be similar 
to the way that Miami plays um, and the old Toronto Raptors of old have played under Nick Nurse. Match every single tendency and energy spark too if the sixers can obtain the rebound battle that'll definitely help them the knicks once again have the first overall ranking and offensive rebounding so if you take that away a large part of their offense is going to be kaput and from there do your thing so do not let the knicks get second chance points and third of course feed and bead once again he is probably going to be injured not probably is going to be injured but if he gets into a flow watch out there's a reason why he is still the reigning mvp and i don't think the knicks have any star power not even star power have any firepower to match with Embiid in the post hardenstein and mitchell robinson probably aren't going to be anything other than crash dummies to get Embiid fouled um but you know there's no one to really match Embiid. we have people to match brunson offense offensively we have people to match di vincenzo josh hart you know so it's definitely possible it's it's going to come down to can Embiid get back to where he was pre-injury maybe maybe not but if he's at least 80 percent i think we should be fine so what are my predictions for this glorious i-95 matchup i'm glad you asked me either way i got this series in six either the sixers win in six or the knicks win in six i think once the momentum slides one way, it's going to stay there forever. With that being said, drum roll, please. I got the Philadelphia 76ers. Big surprise. Who knew? <laughs> I think when it comes down to these games, when teams are so evenly matched, it's going to come down to which side has the best players. And unfortunately, New York fans, that would be one Joel Embiid, who plays for the Philadelphia 76ers last time that I checked other notes the players may be a little bit rested because because the stadium's distances are so short from one another i think also there's a lot of gaps in between games so the only thing that i'm honestly scared of is how og is going to face against the sixers just mainly because the knicks are 20 and 3 with him on the court beyond that i think we can handle them but that definitely does scare me so on the screen you are seeing the schedule for this playoff series and it all begins on saturday 